After watching and examining a stock for quite a few months, I recently opened up a small position in another business development company. It's one that up until this point has done a really good job and I'm honestly not sure why I haven't covered it on this channel before. It currently offers a dividend yield of over 9.5% and it has a really solid track record of dividend payments. Its 5-year regular dividend growth rate is over 14% and on top of that it pays a lot of special dividends which is something that I'm definitely starting to appreciate more. Even better though is the fact that this company has a really impressive amount of share price growth for a BDC which is another really positive aspect of it. The company we're looking at today is 6th Street Specialty Lending, ticker TSLX. They're a specialty finance company that provides senior secured loans, unsecured loans, mezzanine debt, and investments in corporate bonds and equity securities. They invest in a wide range of sectors including business services, software and technology, healthcare, energy, and industrials. TSLX invests in companies with an enterprise value between $50 million and $1 billion or more and an EBITDA between $10 million and $250 million. According to their website, they can provide up to $500 million in financing solutions to their partners and offer long-term flexible solutions. Sixth Street Specialty Lending is a business development company that was launched in 2010 and is managed by Sixth Street Partners. They're a global investment firm founded in 2009 and they currently have more than $60 billion in assets under management. Today TSLX has a market cap of $1.4 billion which makes them considerably smaller than the largest BDC in the industry which is Aries Capital at roughly $10 billion. But as of the making of this video, they're currently the 10th largest BDC in the sector. Since their IPO, this company has originated roughly $22 billion worth of investments and currently have $2.6 billion worth of assets. This BDC is one of the rare exceptions in this industry because they've been able to provide a good amount of growth over the long term. There's a lot of good business development companies out there that don't have a consistent history of providing either share price growth or dividend increases. To give a couple examples, Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital is one BDC that's never provided share price growth and hasn't grown their dividends since 2015. Gladstone Investment is a BDC that has provided some growth, although not as much in terms of dividends. But they have grown their share price by a pretty considerable amount over the last 10 years, which is good. I'd have to say the gold standard when talking about a BDC with good growth would have to be Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN. It does offer probably the lowest dividend yield than any other BDC out there, but there's a lot of reasons why Main Street is one of the most respected companies in this sector. They've been around since before the financial crisis and they've never reduced their dividend. They've grown it faster than almost any other BDC and it does pay monthly dividends too. Not to mention their stock share price has also seen a really impressive amount of growth, which as previously mentioned, most BDCs don't offer much growth in this area. Some other BDCs with good growth include Aries Capital, which I love, and also Capital Southwest Corporation. But going back to 6th Street, their stock currently offers a dividend yield of 9.69% and they pay quarterly. Their dividend distribution history is a little hard to make out using this graph that I usually like to show in my videos, but you can see this company has always paid their normal, regular quarterly dividend without ever reducing or skipping a payment. But more recently, in the last few years, this company has paid more special dividends. You can see these smaller lines on the bar graph, these are additional dividend payments on top of their regular quarterly dividend. So definitely don't mistake these as dividend cuts like I see some people do. Special dividends, or sometimes referred to as supplemental or just additional dividends, are kind of like one-time gifts made to shareholders if a company has performed exceptionally well. Over on the balance sheet, TSLX's book value has kept growing over the last decade, which helps explain the rising dividend distributions. A well-managed BDC should at the very least have a stable book value over time, or more preferably, having a growing book value. This is one of the best ways to tell if the management team has been picking good companies to invest in. In every situation I've ever seen for a BDC, a long-term trend of decreasing book value translates into dividend cuts. Take Great Elm Capital Corporation, ticker GECC. Despite offering a really impressive 18.27% dividend yield, the stock is nothing more than a dividend trap. If we look at the company's book value, we can see that it's been on a very steep decline over the last few years. If we then look at the dividend distributions, we can see a lot of chaos going on with this company. Things got so bad that they had to stop paying monthly dividends for 7 months in 2020. They eventually changed from paying 50 cents per month in dividends to now paying 60 cents per quarter, not per month. That's an 86% dividend cut. And we can see from their stock share price performance that most investors have been extremely pessimistic about this company. Another BDC that I know a lot of my viewers like that I personally don't is SLR Investment Corporation. I seem to be one of the few people that have a bearish outlook on this company, which is fine. It's actually not a horrible stock in my opinion, but looking at their balance sheet, we can also see a falling book value over time. I do understand why a lot of people like it though, because it does pay monthly dividends and it currently offers a nice yield of 11.43%. But I personally think that there's just so many better options out there in terms of high yielding BDCs, with 6th Street being one of those better choices in my opinion. 
Unlike SLRC, TSLX has never reduced their dividends at any time in their history, which is another good sign that they have a good management team. But at the same time, we can't guarantee that they'll never cut their dividends. As we take a deeper look into 6th Street, they have a presentation on their website that does a really good job in covering how they stand out among other companies in the same sector. On the right, you can see that 90% of their debt is first lien and 7% is equity slash other investments. On the left, you can see how other large BDCs typically compare, which include Ares Capital, Alrock, Prospect Capital, and a few others. Most of these other BDCs hold a lot of second lien and subordinated debt and more equity investments. First lien debt is the safest kind of debt to hold, which makes things safer for TSLX, since in the event of a bankruptcy, a company has to repay first lien debt before anything else. What I think is more impressive, though, are the percentages located under the pie graphs. Both TSLX's yield on amortized costs and average return on equity is much higher than their other BDC peers. This shows the company has been able to earn a lot more on their debt portfolio than their competitors. To me, it's a good sign that this company has a really strong portfolio. Their debt diversification is pretty well spread, with business services and financial services making up the largest percentage of their portfolio. They do hold a couple things that I'm not a big fan of. For example, they invest a little in oil, gas, and consumable fuel companies, which I know some BDCs like to avoid. They also invest in hotel, gaming, and leisure businesses. These kinds of companies can be really cyclical, but I trust Six Streets pick these investments very carefully, just like they have with all the others in their portfolio. It's also worth pointing out that 99% of their debt is in floating rate loans. This means the company's been able to collect more revenue from their loans thanks to the Fed's raising interest rates. It's also why some other business development companies have been able to increase or pay higher special dividends this year. At the same time though, it can also elevate the risk of borrowers defaulting on their loans since they have to pay more, so it's not always a guaranteed win for investors. But in Sixth Street's case, having a lot of first lien debt plus their investing track record also helps them. It's likely that once the Fed stop raising interest rates and starts lowering them, then we could see a number of these special dividends being issued start to decrease since they're going to be earning less money from their investments. Here's another slide from their latest investor presentation that shows just how well this company has been able to grow itself. Since their IPO, TSLX has given investors a total return of 175.8%. It also shows that during the same time, their BDC peers have only been able to return 51.4%. But I'm honestly not sure which BDCs are a part of this. I don't know if it's the same companies from two slides ago or if they're different. The footnotes don't contain any information about which companies they are. But we can also see that the S&P 500 during this same period has only returned 136.9%. So up until this point, Sixth Street has been able to outperform a lot of their peers and the market as a whole. So in summary, I've been really impressed with this company's results and I think this company will serve as a good hedge against inflation. For people looking to add another high-yielding stock to their portfolios, I'd suggest giving TSLX a chance. Everything we've looked at indicates that this company has been doing a really solid job at delivering dependable dividends. That's ultimately why I decided to pick up some shares of this stock last week since I'm always on the hunt for some good high-yielding dividend stocks. If you happen to be interested in this stock for yourself, then be sure to perform your own research and due diligence before making an investment decision. Always make sure you're well-educated on the risks associated with what you're investing in.